finally. <clears throat> All right. Damn. Well, hello and welcome, you guys. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. We're starting about a half hour late today. It's no big deal. Apparently, YouTube had some issues. I had some issues on the back end. It kind of kept it going a little bit, but it's whatever. Welcome, you guys, to the vlog. Thank you so much for being here tonight. We have a very full vlog planned out for you guys. In fact, tonight is the night that I I cannot run late. I cannot run late. My buffer has already been taken up by YouTube. So I have to be on it tonight. We can't run late. I don't want to run into any other live streams. I don't want to run into that's what she said. I don't, I don't want that's what she said on my bad side. So we're going to keep this tight tonight. But we're going to do as many of the segments as we can. I have a random liquid tasting picked out. We have Kent's, I ca I'm calling it the God Coil. I'm calling it the God Coil. We have Kent's God Coil. Well, not yet. It's still in a box. But we're going to be vaping Kent's God Coil next to some regular aliens because he says... Well, we have a little video message from him a little bit later on. I can't wait to vape these coils. We got a beer tonight from uh, courtesy of Mr. Matt Sinister. We do have a whole bunch of mail and there's a tube over there. And I know who that tube is from. And I, cut, I have a hint as to what's in this tube, but I'm excited. I'm very excited to get to some mail, to get to some tube. Um, this vlog tonight is brought to you by Opaque Jellification. If you need if you need jellification, if you need it opaque, then come over to opaque jellification. We'll make we'll make it opaque. Also, also brought to you by Boring Gand. <laughs> the great people over there at Boring Gand have decided to sponsor the vlog. Um, also brought to you by. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch. Okay, maybe we don't need the whole. Uh, Maybe we don't need the whole the whole Yawk song, but also brought to you by the Yawk song. Thank you, Yawk song, for sponsoring this vlog as well. Before we get uh, before we get too far into this, I want to give uh, two shout outs here. It is uh, it's Jeremy V's birthday, I believe. Is it Jeremy V's birthday today? It was Jeremy V's birthday today or recently. So happy birthday, Jeremy V. Every, every, ready? Every, happy birthday to you. I don't hear you singing, Pickle. Happy birthday to you. I have a lovely singing voice. Happy birthday, Jeremy V. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Jeremy V. And I also want to shout out uh, James Moore. One of my patrons, James Moore, got engaged. Fucking awesome. Congratulations. Congratulations on getting engaged, James Moore. That's awesome. Um, but right now, what I want to do, I want to do that thing that's my new favorite thing where I get to hear from one of my subscribers. So right now, we're going to hear from Vapen Case. Vapen Case. Are you here, Vapen Case? Let's watch Vapen Case blow some clouds. What say you, Vapen Case? Grim, I love you, man. I respect everything you do for us, buddy. You fight real hard for us. Your reviews are the best for us, I feel. You know, you really go into deep, deep detail about everything. Even though <laughs> you repeat everything you say, I love it. I love it, man. Anyways, I got one big vape for you. Maybe two. Let's keep on vaping. Do it and you're cool. Do it and you're cool. Uh, I don't know. That was kind of a weak cloud. All right, case. One more. Yeah, do another one. Oh, good. Nice. Density, distance, yeah, brother, SD let's keep push on there on the end. Appreciate that, Vape and Case. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Let, let's shout out Vape and Case. And thank you for all the kind words. You know, I do repeat myself a lot. And that's something I'm, I'm very well aware of. And I've been actively trying to not do that as much. Even though I'm going to do it right now, I've been trying to not actively do that as much. But thank you so much, Vape and Case, for sending over that video. If anybody else out there watching this video has something like that that they want to send on over, you want to get featured in the vlog, you want to shout yourself out, shout your shop out, hell, blow a few clouds. Try to do better than Vape and Case. We'll have virtual vlog cloud comps. That's 
<laughs> that's the dorkiest thing I've ever said, but how fun would that be? Good Lord, how fun would that be? So yeah, send them on over to me, nick at grimdrigan.com. You can just mark your subject. That one thing, chances are I'll see it. I'll, I'll see the video and we can put it in this vlog. But uh, so happy birthday to Jeremy V. He's going to be collecting all those timestamps for anybody watching on the replay. They're going to be that first pinned comment down underneath this video. And whoo, off to a strong, off to, off to the races here. Let's see. I feel like I forgot something already. No? Dang, okay, maybe I'm just clipping along so quickly, it just feels like I'm forgetting something. What I'm gonna do right now, it's time to whet my whistle. We got a very special beer here tonight from, uh, from Matt Sinister. I met Matt Sinister at an ECC, was this last year? Was this 2018? I don't quite remember. And he got me this tin, you know, Star Wars lunchbox. And there's a mug on the inside and a, and a bubble glass on the inside. But there was also a beer on the inside that I had truly and honestly completely forgotten about. I got home from ECC. I was like, hey, check this out. And I'm sure picking on rearranging the shelves. And I put it up on the shelf. And it's just been living up there as like a look at how cool this is in my office kind of thing. And then Matt Sinister reminded me, he's like, hey, bro, <laughs> there was a beer in there and there was a beer in there. So tonight, what we're gonna be tasting, I felt like I needed something nice, you know? I felt like it's been, it's been a little bit cruddy. I've been feeling cruddy, I'm feeling much better. Uh, I, uh, we're in quarantine, it kinda sucks. At least a lot of people are still in quarantine. We're still in quarantine for a while, it kinda sucks. So I wanted to do, a great beer and this I can't even I say a lot of things are my favorite things this is my favorite beer of all time this is the Firestone Sticky Monkey it doesn't fit into your categories of beers man this lives outside of the box literally I'm shaking it all up outside of the box they had to make up a brand, like a designation for this beer. They call it a Central Coast Quad, which doesn't mean anything. It's kind of uh, styled after a Belgian quad, but it's brewed uh, on in California. So they call it a Central Coast Quad. It's one of the most flavorfully complex, just beautifully delicious beers that I've ever had in my life. And as we've experienced, it has a little bit of a high ABV, which Come on, that just makes the vlog so much better. So the problem is, I don't have a bottle opener right now at all. Let's see, wait, this might be a bottle opener. Yep, it is matching carpet to the rescue. Did you know that this was a bottle opener too, matching carpet? That's kind of incredible. <laughs> That's kind of incredible. So we're gonna be pouring this Firestone Sticky Monkey into a Duval glass over, uh, you know, over nothing. It's going to pour real, real dark. This is a real, real dark beer. Like I said, it's kind of modeled after a, like a Belgian quad, but they call it a Central Coast quad. The big thing that I get out of this beer is so many low notes, so many like raisiny dates, molasses, like rich, dark, earthy, earthy, earthy flavors. I don't even have a tobacco to pair with this tonight. Damn it, man. Damn it, Nick. You fucked up. All right, uh, yeah, it's okay. I don't have a tobacco to pair this with tonight, but cheers, here's to you guys. Thanks for coming out. Let's have some beer. It's incredible. It's incredible. This is the most incredible beer on the face of the planet. There's a little bit of like sweetness to it, but I get that strong, like like I said, raisins, dates, molasses. It's a very, very earthy, very, very, very rich beer. The flavor is overpowering and it has a strong alcohol, like note to it, like what do you see? What do people say? Nose, a whisper of alcohol. You can kind of, you get a little bit of that like bourbon barrel age sort of whisper in there. Unreal, unreal. I don't, I don't even need to look this up on Beer Advocate because 
It's stupidly highly rated, stupidly highly rated. If you are even a passive craft beer fan and you want something that is just going to knock your face in the dirt, Sticky Monkey, Sticky Monkey, Firestone, Sticky Monkey. This is 2018. I have another big bottle of this that I've been saving since 2016, I believe. And uh, someday, years from now, I'm just going to open that and hope it, hope it hasn't gone bad. Ruby Ruby, call that boozy. All right, it's got a boozy, sort of a boozy component to it that I really like. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a whiskey bourbon fan, so I like having that sort of like boozy whiskey kind of flavor on top of this like gloriously malty molasses, just rich, and it's got this huge mouthfeel. You just, in your mouth has a huge, huge mouthfeel. Now, like I said, I got nothing to pair this with. Let's try root beer. Let's try Sifu's root beer. That is actually awesome. Uh, that's actually awesome. That's actually awesome. I really was thinking like a like a tobacco, like that Black Panther tobacco would be really good with this beer. This root beer is killing it right now with this beer. Damn. Damn, that's good. That's a really good pairing. I actually really just want to try it real quickly with some fairy wings. Just, it's whatever, just some fairy wings. I have been obsessed with this liquid ever since it has come back into my life. The bottle is gone. For the record, the bottle I got recently, just completely gone. And I'm gonna need some more. Who was that, Jim Bubba? I'm gonna need way more fairy wings. Let's try it. Burp life. <laughs> Look, it's good. It's just not as good as the root beer with this beer. Just not as good as the root beer with that beer. So um, with that done, I hope everybody has a delicious beverage tonight. I hope everybody has some vapes tonight. What I am uh, vaping most recently, as you saw, it's that Def Mods. It's the satanic one with all the satanic stuff all over it that I love. It's a DNA 250C topped with that uh, Falcon 2 with that coil head from the Robo 2020 is still going strong. And I'm still rocking it at 70 watts. I've had no desire to like back down the wattage in any way. It hasn't been it almost, almost. And I put this coil head through hell and back. It went through that Robo 2020 and it's almost like a new-ish coil head. I could get at least another week out of this. We're gonna try it. I've just been using that root beer. And it seems to be working just fine. Um, also, the uh, the Grim Army uh, BMI Touch. This is just one of my favorite bangers. I rock this constantly. That's the Type 2 RTA on top, final prototype. These are gonna be dropping, oh good Lord, just as soon as they possibly can. I'm just a big fan of the Touch. I just really like this. I would love to do another run with BMI. We're going to see how that goes. Inside, again, is some of Sifu's uh, Peach Among Worlds. It's, it's, it's awesome. I mean, I guess I don't have to vape every single thing. I just enjoy them so much. Got the billet box going hard. I have, I've become obsessed with a billet box. And I don't, it just happened, like out of nowhere. I got this billet box from, uh, in Ohio, uh, Ohio, I will find the answer to this of who I got this billet box from because I have to give them credit because this is an incredible billet box. It's got Noli Designs doors, Noli Design drip tip, and it's the green version, which I'm told is kind of like a rare thing. Like it's kind of hard to get a hold of a green one and I have a green one and that makes me really stoked. I love the billet box and I guess I didn't realize, maybe didn't realize, I guess it was kind of just off my radar of all of like the billet box stuff that you can get all the, I don't know what they're called, holes, what are they called? Holes, ditches, something like that, and little insider things and, and new doors and things like this. I'm about to go deeply down the rabbit hole of billet boxes. It's just a thing that's going to happen. My billet box budget hands are just gone. Don't even care. Let's just get some cool billet box stuff. But I've been rocking this with the North Bridge. This is a uh, 
a smoke Nord coil head in here, which is pretty good. Uh, it's cherry bomb on the inside, which not everybody's gonna like. It's a mentholated cherry. It kind of tastes like a cough drop, but not really to me. Harold, yes, Harold, billet box, Harold. Harold gave me the billet box in Utah or Idaho. Idaho, it was Idaho. This came from Idaho and it came from Harold. Yes, yes, Harold, thank you. you you've set me on this crazy billet box path that I, I, I don't even see the bottom of. I'm just jumping into the hole, just like Ray jumping into the hole on Octu Island. I'm jumping into the hole of billet boxes. Got to be a better way to say that. Um, Vupu Drag X, I got this last week in the vlog, and I've literally been vaping it every day since. I have so many thoughts on this. You wouldn't think it, but I have so many thoughts on this. It's actually been vaping pretty good. Squeezed apple menthol is on the inside. Still hanging in there hard last week from the retro vape. Still rocking the First Order Trooper uh, wooden box mod from Aria. That is the Series Axial Pro on top with an orange, for some reason, just orange. Uh, I don't know why I chose orange. DHD drip tip. Still rocking that buttermilk pie as well. The berry milk pie in here. Really, really been enjoying this, Kevin. Uh, lost the cap to the bottle. That's just the thing that happens sometimes. So it's just been sitting there. But I've been vaping Series again, which is weird and it feels weird. but it's so good, but it's so delicious. And then I guessed lastly, but certainly not leastly, uh, thanks to my yo yo Cool Kids Club posting hand checks of clutch mods all the time, I had to set up my clutch mod. I thought, nope, the clutch is too effing cool. I set it up with the unholy uh, limited edition recoil on there, DHD metal head on top with, this is the first drip tip. I believe this is the first drip tip that I ever got from Jess Marie DHD. And I think it was in Las Vegas. And I think it was at that, I don't remember the name of the show, but I'm pretty sure it was in Las Vegas. Just doing some Pony on Acid on this because Pony on Acid, we're gonna be using Pony on Acid later as the benchmark between the Kent God Coil and, you know, just regular old aliens. Regular boring old, regular boring old aliens compared to Kent's God Coil. This has been amazing too. Good Lord. This is, this is my favorite out of everything you just saw. <laughs> this has been, uh, this is just rock and roll. I got to get my vapes in. Also the as vape hit up, which it's not really anything super special. It's just really cool and works awesome. That is all I've been using the fairy wings in. And I have cranked through that whole 30 mil bottle of fairy wings. I use this until it's dead and then I charge it and I'm using it while I'm charging it. And I want to use this all the time. I wish I had like five of these as vape hitters. RBA base is just fucking rad, rad in there. So what we're going to do not now, that's just a little bit of what I've been vaping, but what we're going to do right now is answer some super chats. All right, what's up, you super chatters? Some of these came in before the vlog even started, like well before the vlog even started, but uh, I appreciate it. Matt Sinister, first out of the gate. Two weeks from today on Thursday, the 28th, will be my 44th birthday. 44th? 44th <laughs> birthday. Uh, they say I'm not old. As a former pro wrestler, it's not the age, it's the mileage. Damn Damn right, Matt Sinister. You can only take so many bumps. You know, you can only take so many chair shots. You can only take so many power bombs before, yeah, it's the mileage. Thank you for that, Matt Sinister. The dark smoke, very gracious of you. Me and the wife share the same birthday as Matt. I'm honored. Matt Cully, our very own Matt Cully from Suck My Mod. I'm not gonna let him forget Suck My Mod. He, he's trying to change it. And he's trying to be Matt from SMM. Nobody let him get away with that. <laughs> Nobody let him get away with that. It suck my mod. He chose that name. He has to stick with it. I don't get to be anything other than Grim Green. That's it. Thankfully, I chose the name Grim Green and not 
you know, suck my mom. That's okay. Uh, Barbara, how are you doing? Yay, vlog day. May the force be with you. Love you, cuz. Thank you, Barbara. Love you, too. Ambivalent chaos. Politicians haven't been tarred and feathered in a while, and it shows. <laughs> We used to t tar and feather politicians that we didn't agree with. I was just kind of having this conversation recently with Pickle about, I feel like we should have politicians that we hate. We shouldn't elect people that we find pleasing. We should elect people that we find offensive so that we don't let them get away with shit. That's, that's the moral of the story. I think if you're, if you're real pleasant and nice and you know well-spoken, you can get away with a lot of shit if people like you. But if people dislike you, you're not getting away with much. You're, you're getting away with a lot less. Clouds Bro Reviews. Shall I start off the vlog with a super chat? I think so. Yo, yo, brother, and all the cool kids. Hell yeah, Clouds Bro Reviews. Hell yeah, yo, yo. Uh, cloud Chats, very gracious of you. Nick, any chance of showing me how the rye looks on a clutch? Got a clutch coming, and I'm trying to work out what Addy's going to top it. Love your work always. Yeah, that's easily done. Hang on. Uh, I don't know where my clutch is. Hang on. Are not, not the clutch, the, 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 hang on. Ha ha, the rye. Yeah, let me throw this on here real quick, you know? Reasonable requests can always, always be accommodated. Um, just right out of the gate, I'm gonna tell you, it's pretty dope on the, it's pretty dope on here. It fits well, it looks good, it's solid. There you go. That's the rye on top of the uh, the clutch for you. Oh, too close. Rye on top of the clutch. Yeah, looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. You know, matte black or stainless steel, kind of depending on uh, you know what you want to go for there. But I think that looks pretty good. I think that looks pretty good. I see. I forgot where I was in the super chat. So, one chat comes in and it, it ruins everything. Just kidding. Cloudy chats. There you go. So yeah, cloudy chats. I hope that uh, hope that helps. Hope that helps make your decision a little bit easier. Maybe, maybe not. Michael, very gracious of you. Cheers, man. Yeah, cheers. And Matt Sinister. Oh, there's a bottle opener in the box. Come on, is there really? Did I miss it? Oh, there is a bottle opener in the box. It's in this cup, isn't it? Ha! Oh, dang, and it's a Millennium Falcon. Uh... <laughs> Thanks, Matt Sinister. You know what? I'm glad you got my back, man. I don't know what I would do. I don't know what I would do. All right, cool. Well, now I can never say I don't have a... Uh... See, I should have been drinking beer out of the Star Wars cup. Why am I not drinking beer out of the Star Wars cup, man? All right, Twisted Messes. Whoa, whoa, Twisted Messes. Hang on there, big spender. Hang on there, one percenter twisted messes. Mr. Rollin' in money. Here's the money we agree, agreed upon to get me in the description. <laughs> Kent. Kent. I appreciate you, Kent. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. Um, let's pause there. Let's pause there because I really, there's some news and advocacy stuff that I wanted to talk about and I want to get it I just want to do it now because I've been reading this stuff and I just want to do it now. So, Boosh, let's do this news and advocacy. So the first thing here in the news and advocacy segment that I wanted to mention is uh, Australia. I thought this was really interesting. Um, nicotine in Australia, vaping and nicotine in Australia is very, 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 very looked down upon. Nicotine itself is illegal in Australia, I illegal in Australia. And one of my patrons, Breeze Tones, if you guys aren't hip to Breeze Tones, Breeze Tones makes some, look, I'm, I don't wanna grow his head anymore. He makes some pretty rockin' coils. He makes some pretty rockin' coils. Check out Breeze Tones. But this is what Breeze Tones said on our, uh, I hope he's okay with me sharing this. I'm sure he will be, sure he will be. Uh, this is what he said on the, on the patron Discord. Um, if anyone, oh, here, let me blow this up. I don't know why I didn't do that. Uh, if anyone is interested, Australian folk, today I am booked for an appointment for a nicotine prescription. I will post the cost, the avenue, and how it can be achieved if I get it, the details on the appointment, and anything else I glean from it today. Hope this might help others who use nicotine here on Australia illegally 
like me. Illegal. Breeze Tones is going to have to get a prescription to use nicotine to vape. The consequences of which, you know, if you're caught with nicotine without a prescription, hefty fines, jail. I mean, you can be arrested. That's unbelievable to me. So Breeze Tones, please keep at least me updated. We'll keep everybody updated on how this goes. I'd like to know how easy it is. I hate that that's a huge jump hoop that people have to jump through just in order to vape and vape in Australia. I mean, that's, that's unbelievable to me. That's, that's making vaping so inaccessible to smokers. It's not even funny. You know, you want to quit smoking. You're going to need a prescription for nicotine because it's illegal here. It's crazy. And I know there is the Australian Tobacco Harm Reduction Association. They're working on a lot of stuff behind the scenes. They've been making some moves in Australia to help improve the situation over there. But it's still, it's an uphill battle. Your, your appointment's in a couple hours? All right. Well, I'm, I'm excited to hear how it goes. I'm interested to see what the process is, what they ask you. Like, why would you need a prescription for, for nicotine? I just thought that was really, really interesting. Yeah, I just thought that was really, really interesting. So uh, I also, here quickly, let me quickly, during the news and advocacy here, I don't know why I didn't do these at the beginning. Uh, I wanna give a shout out to who's this guy? He said, I'm upset I have to miss the vlog this week. I'll be making a 10 hours drive to Nashville area. I I'm sorry, you know, I hope you catch the replay. Who's this guy? Uh, be safe, enjoy your road trip and uh, and all that stuff. And I, I don't mean to drag this out into, into the open here, Silent Drive, but I saw you post this in the chat as I was setting up the vlog and I just wanted to give you a shout out. Uh, not to be a bad news bummer bear, I just lost my uncle today. He's the one who made me understand music done well, as he would say. Steely Dan, Jefferson Airplane, Zeppelin, Crosby, Stills, Nash, on deck. Absolutely silent drive. Absolutely. I, I'm very sorry for your loss. I'm glad you're here tonight. Hope we can cheer you up. Hope we can cheer you up a little bit. And I hope you rocked out hard to that music. Rocked out hard to that music, silent drive. Um, so there's, here's another thing I'm just going to pimp out as well. Um, this is happening soon. I talked about it last week in the vlog and I'm really excited about it, but this is the Reason Foundation's virtual panel discussion, vaping and COVID-19. This is fantastic. I love the crap out of this. I've already RSVP'd to it. Numerous sources have suggested vaping could be a risk factor for either contracting or increasing the severity of COVID-19 which we're going to be talking about a little bit tonight. Some politicians have gone so far as to demand the FDA temporarily ban e-cigs until the pandemic subsides. The World Health Organization claims the tobacco industry is creating doubt about the risks of nicotine and tobacco product use and COVID-19. Join this panel discussion to hear what impact this in misinformation is having on tobacco harm reduction and how policymakers should consider regulating alternative nicotine products in the age of COVID-19. Who's going to be there? Oh, just everybody awesome. Guy Bentley, Sally Sado, Michelle Mitten, and uh, Tim Andrews, who I don't know. Oh, I might be familiar with Tim Andrews. All, all good people. All awesomely, awesomely great, smart people. I mean, come on. Guy Bentley, Sally Sado, Michelle Mitten. I got to meet Michelle Mitten at the DC rally. Gr she's awesome. She's smart. I, she's great. She is great. I cannot wait to watch this. And this is happening Tuesday, May 19th, 12.30 p.m. You can RSVP to the Zoom room. I'm going to be there. I'm legitimately very, very excited about this. Very, very excited about this. I'll put a link in the chat right now if anybody's interested. And I'll put a link down in the description uh, as well, as well for this video. Um, and speaking, <sighs> there's more lawsuits coming, but we're going to talk about... Uh, we're going to talk about nicotine again, nicotine and COVID-19. This is, you know, the topic. This is the news right now. It is all over the place. Mainstream media, not a peep, not a peep. You won't see this on CNN. You won't see this on Fox News. You're not going to see this on ABC. You're not going to see this on NBC. You're not going to see this on mainstream media. And I don't know why because it really is good information and it's only going to help people in the long run. But we got this here from uh, 
from Daily Mail with a big headline on it, more evidence emerges. Imagine that, that smokers are protected from coronavirus. I don't know why they keep using the term smokers, but that's just, I guess it's because maybe smokers and nicotine have been so, you know, combined for the last forever that people still can't disassociate nicotine, you know, divorced from tobacco, like outside of tobacco. The idea of a quote unquote clean nicotine just seems to like throw, throw people's heads into like, they don't just can't possibly understand it. Can't possibly understand it. They always talk about it. Like it's smoking. More evidence emerges that smokers are protected from coronavirus. Italian study finds them five times less likely to end up in the hospital, but almost twice as likely to die if they do. And that's, that's the subtlety, that's the nuance of it right there, you know? Daily Mail goes on to say, underlying mechanisms of how smokers are protected from the virus is not yet clear, but a theory suggests that nicotine reduces ACE2 receptors, which means that their immune system is more tolerant and does not overreact. On the other hand, smokers may be more prone to not, I'm sorry, on the other hand, non-smokers may be more prone to cytokine storms or the sudden and deadly release of inflammatory markers once infected by the virus. Doctors have previously noted that it is unusually, that it is usually the body's response rather than the virus itself that plays a significant role in how a person gets sick. More evidence coming out. We have Chinese evidence. We have French evidence as Iowa Attorney General Tom Miller said at the very beginning of this vlog. Uh, I love it to Iowa Attorney General Tom Miller. He, he's one of the politicians and there's, he's not, I know he's not a politician. He's an attorney general and you know, there's kind of a distinction. There's a difference there. In the past on this vlog and in videos and things like that, when I'm trying to get people pumped, you know, for, for advocacy or trying to, you know, rally the troops behind a certain someone, I've asked people to support people in the past that have turned out to be meh, more or less kind of crappy people. You know, Duncan Hunter was the representative in California who was going to take on Washington and, and vaping because he was a vapor and he was going to rewrite the deeming rule. And he had all these great ideas. And I'm like, Duncan Hunter. And I went out of my way, drove out to Alpine, California with a bunch of people to have a meeting with Duncan Hunter. And I came away from it feeling really good. And I'm like, Duncan is going to kill this. Duncan is our great, you know, our great hope in California. And then it turns out that Duncan Hunter was, you know, spending a lot of his campaign funds on all the wrong shit. And then he ended up going to jail and it's like, well, shit, Senator Ron Johnson, right? Senator Ron Johnson, vapors got Senator Ron Johnson reelected in Wisconsin and he went on video and I've played this video so many times on this vlog in the past. I've played that video of Senator Ron Johnson when he th he's thanking vapors on video saying, you guys made this possible. I will be in your corner. And then, and then, and then, and then nothing. And then Senator Ron Johnson's a Senator again, thanks to vaping. And then he, it turns out that he wasn't really like super in our corner and didn't do much when, uh, you know, Scott Gottlieb was talking about the vaping epidemic and how, uh, Jerome Adams was talking about how, nope, vaping. I can't believe he says stuff like this. Vaping doesn't help you quit. Jerome Adams has said that that's crazy. But the Iowa attorney general, Tom Miller rules. He rules and he posted a tweet on Twitter that was talking about, Hey, I'm going to be taking general questions. If anybody has any questions about COVID-19, this, that, and the other. And so I tweeted at him and said, what do you think about this French study? That's talking about nicotine. He is on the side of tobacco harm reduction because he is, he's been fighting against big tobacco his entire career, his entire career. And he's one of these guys he writes letters to the FDA defending vaping and tobacco harm reduction. He, he, you know, like he said in that tweet, he wishes that politicians, you know, would take more seriously the health benefits that come from smokers switching to vaping. I think he's going to be one of these guys that is going to be really instrumental and really critical in, in getting this vaping and tobacco harm reduction movement, you know, some more legs, you know, that's what we need. <laughs> we need, we need some more legs. I don't know if you're trying to rally the people or play trombone with yourself. 
I don't know. That's a little bit of like rallying and playing the trombone. I don't know. Maybe it's both. Who knows? And that kind of like that kind of goes along exactly with this other article that I found that's talking about basically the same exact thing. This comes from uh, the Science Times, the big headline on it. Same as the last. Smokers are five times less likely to catch coronavirus, but twice as likely to die when they do study finds. So what they're finding, and I haven't seen the French study, Danielle, I, I haven't heard anything about it. I'm, sure, I'm, I'm assuming it's taking time, you know, these studies to do. There's a French study going on right now where they're giving nicotine patches to, to you know, critical care workers and things like this. Five times less likely to catch coronavirus, but twice as likely to die when they do. It seems that the media and people like, I mean, I don't want to say his name. Do I have to say his name? Stanton Glance. I just, it sounds like just verbal diarrhea. I hate saying Stanton Glance's name. Stanton Glance, of course, you can Google smoking and COVID-19 and what you're going to find in the United States is this UCSF study from Stanton Glantz that is solely focusing on the second half of the equation and completely ignoring the fact that smokers are drastically underrepresented in COVID numbers. All this study focuses on is how if a smoker eventually gets it, the severity of it is much, much worse, which yes, that makes a lot of sense. That's the second part of the puzzle, and that's the one, that's the only thing that Stanton Glantz is focusing on. And so he's saying smoking makes it worse, you know, and the World Health Organization is accusing, accusing these other, you know, these other scientific bodies of manipulating and trying to, you know, confuse people. It's insanity. It's insanity when scientists are just, you know, disagreeing with each other and we have Stanton Glance at UCSF saying, oh, no, 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 smokers, smokers, it's worse for smokers. It's, it's worse for smokers. That's all. It's just worse. It's no better. It's just worse. Well, what about all the COVID patients that are smokers? You know, they're, smokers are really underrepresented in these COVID numbers. No, 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 no. So they're going to have to follow the science. They, right? <laughs> I mean, they're going to have to follow the science. If the Italians and the French and the United Kingdom all come to the same conclusion that nicotine has preventative COVID, you know, uh, properties to it. Is, are people going to believe them? Are, are people really going to follow the science? Do you think the United States is going to follow the science on that? Everybody that says they follow the science, here's the challenge. Nicotine might actually prevent you from contracting COVID-19 Disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. I just read the information available to me and then I make a decision based on that. Where's my other, uh, where's my other thing? I guess I don't have it. Oh, this one too. Yeah, this one too. So this is from, uh, this is from that science article. More evidence. <laughs> okay. Just calm down. Let's stay hydrated, hydro homies. How about that before we dive into this paragraph? I'm sweat. It's like, it's like, it's like Palm Springs hot in here right now. More evidence is revealed confirming that smokers could be protected from the deadly coronavirus after researchers found a lesser of them getting lesser number of them getting sick. Yeah, that's the part that literally everybody is just ostrich with their fucking head in the sand about. According to their study, 5% of 441 hospitalized COVID-19 patients were active smokers, which scientists described as a very low number, given that 24% of the Italian population is known to be hooked on cigarettes. The theory that smokers are protected from the virus has emerged over the past few weeks from several global studies. However, smokers are twice as like twice more likely to succumb to the disease once they are hospitalized. Nuance. There's nuance to this discussion. You can't just have a one size fits all here. You can't just say smoking makes COVID worse. That's not a blanket statement you can make in the same way that you can't make the blanket statement that smoking makes, smoking prevents you from getting COVID. That's the state. You can't make that statement either. There is nuance to this. 
the statement that should be getting put out there that should be getting communicated to everybody with no Stanton glance spin on it, no political ideology spin on it is that smokers are underrepresented in COVID patients right now, but the smokers that are getting it are severely getting from getting it and it's, you know, it's mortal, it's mortality. That's the information that should be getting out there. But we don't like that. You know, we don't like that in 2020. We just want one word, two words at the max, good or bad or, you know, safe, unsafe. Well, it's, there's, there's safe way to do unsafe things. And, and you know, there's, there's subtleties to this, man. How's nobody getting that? You just want one blanket, like safe thing. That's not, that's just not the way science works. That's just not the way the world works, man. It's just not the way the world works. So in addition to that, this is something that I am actively, actively following constantly. I want to read everything I can about nicotine and COVID and smoking and COVID. I have been up to my elbows in articles and studies and everything that I possibly can read about this. I am fascinated by this and I can't, I can't wait for this to get, you know, really out there in the mainstream media. Like I can't wait to see Bloomberg kind of reporting on this. I kind of want to see ABC and NBC News reporting on this. I want to see Sean Hannity. <laughs> no, Sean Hannity. I want to see Sean Hannity talk. I want to see Steven Crowder talking about this. Nobody's talking about nicotine and COVID-19. It's making me insane. Nicotine is going to change the world. Vaping is going to change the world. Damn it. Okay. Didn't mean to go on such a soapbox there. Last little bit of news that I wanted to talk about, or second to last, I guess. Judicial Watch. This group, Judicial Watch, suing over records on Obama e-cig regs. And take a look at this like time capsule of vapor products here. Look at this. What is that? An Aspire in there. There's some Kanger stuff. Some more Aspire stuff. That's E-Leaf right there. There's a smoke uh, box mod. That's an iTaste SVD right there. There's an iTaste SVD in there. That mod came out <laughs> when in like 2012, 2011. They have no, no more updated pictures than this. That's crazy to me. Okay, let's shrink this back down. Judicial Watch sues over records on Obama e-cig regs. In 2016, FDA ruled e-cigarettes, tobacco products, restricting their sale and distribution despite conclusive studies showing their substantial success in ending tobacco addiction. So this group, Judicial Watch, and I don't, I'm not saying that I, I, you know, I support this group, the Judicial Watch. I, I read what they're about and they're really just kind of a, what I believe in, hold the government accountable. You know, they don't like corruption and they want to hold the government accountable and they use the Freedom of Information Act to do it. So I'm just going to read this quick little blurb right here. There's also a YouTube video if anybody wants the really short and condensed version on the Judicial Watch YouTube site. Judicial Watch announced today that it filed a freedom of information lawsuit against the Department of Health and Human Services, the HHS, man, seeking records from the Food and Drug Administration, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and the Office of the Surgeon General. Uh-oh. Who was the Surgeon General in 2016? That was Vivek. Wasn't that Vivek Murthy? Wasn't that Vivek Murthy? Ooh, he might be under fire here. And Obama might be under fire here. And this on top of like Obamagate, what is happening in the world right now? What is happening in the world right now? Regarding the cancer causing effects of electronic cigarettes as compared to traditional cigarettes. And yeah, absolutely. This is something that I have been talking about for years, that every vape advocate has been talking about for years. And I've personally said this thousands of times, but if you're not comparing vaping to cigarettes, then you're doing it wrong. You should only be comparing vaping to cigarettes because that's the connection. You're not comparing vaping to breathing clean oxygen. That's ridiculous and serves absolutely no purpose. The point isn't to get non-smokers and non-vapers to vape. The point is to get currently addicted adult smokers to switch to a far, 
far less harmful alternative. I don't know why this is so difficult. I understood this the first time I picked up an e-cig. I went, less harmful. Okay, harm reduction, boom. Barely a high school graduate. I can understand harm reduction. I don't understand how the FDA can't. I don't understand how Scott Gottlieb can't. I don't understand how the CDC can't. I don't understand how Jerome Adams, our Surgeon General, the Doctor of America, doesn't understand harm reduction, the concept of harm reduction. The lawsuit was filed after the agencies failed to respond to a Freedom of, Act, Freedom of Information Act request sent March 2017 seeking all internal FDA, CDC, or Surgeon General emails discussing the relative carcinogenity of inhalation from electronic nicotine delivery systems compared to inhalation from traditional combustible tobacco cigarettes. They cite the Royal College of Physicians and their report, Nicotine Without Smoke, you know, Tobacco Harm Reduction. I'm not saying that this is real. This might go nowhere. This might go nowhere or it could blow the lid off of everything that happened in 2016 when, you know, good old Obama. Thanks, Obama. Obama's FDA. Obama's Surgeon General. Let's see where it goes. I for one am, uh, I for one am fascinated to see where this goes. So I will follow this as closely as I possibly can. Started following Judicial Watch on Twitter. I'm going to put a Judicial Watch Google notification so that I can get everything I possibly can because I want to follow this. I want to see where this. Uh, I want to see where this lawsuit goes to. I'll put again descriptions to everything I'm talking about. Uh, links rather. What did I say? Come on. Links to everything I'm talking about down in the description below. Cheers. So yeah, that's kind of uh, that's kind of all I have for news and advocacy. I did, and look, I don't want to end this on a bummer note in any capacity, but it's just one of those things that's going to happen. And I don't, you know, I, I was talking to, I'll just say someone. We'll save names. I'll just say I was talking to someone, someone who I respect, and someone who is a diehard, diehard advocate, someone that truly, truly gives a shit about this industry. We were talking about the California flavor ban. And on Tuesday, bro, Tuesday, we talked about the committee meeting that was coming up on Wednesday and how you had to call in because you couldn't go to the, to the Senate committee meeting. You had to call in, you know? The California flavor ban passed this step, not surprisingly, passed this step, went on to the next step, went to, to the appropriations committee or something like that, appropriations committee or something like that, but it passed through to the next step. And this person I was talking to watched the whole stream and no vapors called. No vapors called. Zero vapors called to voice their concern against the statewide flavor ban. And that, like that kind of bummed me out. You know, we need to, we need to do. You don't have to do everything, but we do have to do something. Let's put our money where our mouths are and not just talk. Let's do, you know, let's do. Let's make the calls. And I know we've been getting burnt out and I know it's been a lot. And we all went to the rally and we've all been making phone calls to the White House and we've all been doing this and we've all been doing that. I was just surprised, I guess, and a little bit bummed out that no vapor in California called to protest the flavor ban. Not even me. I'm guilty of it too. I was at the doctor while this was happening. So that's my excuse. But we need to, we need to put action behind our words because without action behind your words, your words aren't going to mean much. So we can get as mad as we want on Twitter and, and, and go on Twitter and call Cuomo, you know, an MSA blood money loving vampire, but that doesn't accomplish much other than making us feel good. Official actions and real change comes from doing, and you don't have to do everything, but you do have to do something. And so let's do something, you know, we need to put our money where our mouth is. We do. 
I believe that we do. I believe that we do. I believe that I like the song. I believe I can fly. All right, so uh, let's get out some news and advocacy. Let's have a little bit more fun. Let's get into some mayo. Let's get into some... uh, Danielle did call. I, let's get into some mayo. Let's get into some other fun stuff. I am dying, dying, dying to get to this God coil, dying to get to this God coil. But before we get there, uh, let's do a couple more. Uh, let's do a couple more super chats here. Yeah, super chats. Not the whole thing. Not the whole thing. Never the whole thing. I mean, ne- never the whole thing. Um, we're picking up here with Nabble. Nabble. What up, Nabble? The billet box slope is slippery, man. Screws, inserts, buttons, doors, tips, stickers, bridges. If you need any me- recommendations, I'll be around the Discord. Uh, yes. Uh-huh. 8,000% yes. 8,000% yes. I want all the billet box things. In fact, uh, one of my UK dudes, Black uh, Blackline Builds, he's a billet boxer guy too, and he was showing me this Atmazoo little bridge thing that goes in and it looks cool. He's like, it vapes amazing. And I'm thinking that's something I'm going to spend money on without a doubt. That's something I'm going to spend money on. So let's go down that billet box hole together. There's got to be a better way to say that. Vape in case. Lol. Right on brother. Thanks for playing my vid. Uh, It's so cool. I just got my billet box and I love it uh, with some six milligram pony on acid. Let's keep on vaping everyone. Hell yeah. Man, I kind of regret. I wish I'd put six milligram pony and acid on this. That would have been great. Even three milligram in this. Great. Kevin, dude, very gracious of you. Thank you. Uh, Love your streams. Good stuff. Been Siggy free for five months. Fuck yeah, Kevin. Boom. Bump that fist. Five months? Let me guess. You, you can already taste things better. You can already smell things better. You can go upstairs without getting winded already. <laughs> How drastic is that first few months when you switch to vaping? Your life just exponentially improves instantly, instantly. Appreciate that, Kevin. Uh, Will boys, gracious of you. How long does your Grim Kit coils last? Mine, three to five days. Uh, um, I've had uh, a few Grim Kit coils that have lasted me weeks. I've had a few Grim Kit coils that have lasted me one day. I kind of just blame Hellvape and their weird manufacturing. Their coil heads aren't that consistent. This was one of the issues before we started doing the Grim Kit was coil head inconsistency, and it seems to be continuing. I'm I'm free and clear of Hellvape at this point. We're good with Hellvape. We're good with Hellvape. I'm good with Hellvape. I just will never work with them again. My obligation to Hellvape is over. They're running with the Grim Kit and still selling it, and it's whatever, and that's fine. So I'm, I'm, I'm upset that my name is on it, and I'm upset that my name is on it, and they're still selling it because I don't, I'm not getting anything from it, and I have nothing to do with it. <laughs> I've got, literally got nothing to do with it anymore. If you want to buy a Grim Kit and you want to be like, I'm going to help out Grim Green, I'm going to get a Grim Kit, definitely go to RecoilRDA.com. And I didn't mean to do that like in my mocking way. But if you want to, RecoilRDA.com, and, and then I'll support it. If you bought it from RecoilRDA.com, I'll, I'll take care of you. If you bought it from Vapor DNA, I'm sorry, that's a hell vape issue now. I just... I didn't think, I was really looking forward to working with Hellvape. After I met Gene from Hellvape, I was really feeling good. I felt great. I'd never worked with a company like that before and it was a bad experience and I don't want to work with another company ever again. And that's why I'm releasing this RTA by myself because I don't want it to be the Hellvape type two RTA or the whatever, the Vupu Hellvape Hellvape RTA, type two RTA. So... I apologize. It, they can kind of last from whenever to whenever. Uh, the Dark Smoke, same as Matt Sinister. All right, same as Matt Sinister. Wisp, very gracious of you. Fist bump yourself, Nick. Uh, watched Kent's stream yesterday and uh, a lot of him discovering the use of multiple setup juices at once. Yeah, <laughs> that was Kent's big epiphany he had this year was like, bro, I can set up multiple mods with multiple different toppers. And I'm like, yeah, 
Welcome to what makes vaping fun. <laughs> I love having multiple setups. I like being able to grab a giant box mod and vape a sub ohm tank for a little bit and then grab a dripper and have a completely different vape experience and different flavor. Welcome, Kent. Appreciate that wisp. Jesse James, BRB, shed time. Vaping my BB with Boule Bolu, bruh. Jesse, you enjoy that shed time. I've been off the shed time for about a week now. We'll see how it goes. Red Gorilla, very gracious of you because you're always fighting for us. Thanks, bro. You know what? You know, I, it's my pleasure. I wouldn't do it if I didn't give a shit. If I didn't care, this would be a lot easier. I could just ignore everything. But I, I can't. I can't ignore everything. I just can't do it. Jake, Scrapwood, how you doing, man? So single 21700 DNA 75C or dual 18650-250C? Duels. Duels, boy. Dual to dual 18650s. We got a whole mess of 18650s arriving at the house tomorrow, and I'm really excited about it. Let's go dual 18650s, Jake. Eifer, probably won't be chatting too much. Got to write my novel. Just want to say hi, cool kids. Yeah, hell yeah, Eifer. Dude, just hang out, play the vlog in the background, write your novel, play video games, vape, build stuff, do whatever you wanna do. You don't have to pay attention to me. I can just be here to keep you company, man. Sick boy, very gracious of you. Working on the house outside today and I burnt my bald head. Realizations while drinking, watching the vlog. Yeah, you gotta be careful, man. That's why I wear a hat, always. Signature tips, very cool of you, appreciate that. Uh, what's up, Nick, thank you for the clutch love. L look, thank you for the clutch. Thank you and thank Mike Vapes for the mother truck and clutch. I, I love the crap out of this thing. This is, uh, and I'm not just saying this because you're here, this is one of the best mechs ever. It's just one of the best mechs, period. Just dot, period, clutch. Dot period clutch. Uh, thank you very much, Signature Tips. I appreciate that. We're gonna uh, we're gonna read Kevin Chocolates here. Uh, I am now Kevin Chocolate on Instagram, and damn it, I need a clutch and a rye RDA now. Thanks, Nick. Well, look, Kevin Chocolate, vape budget hands, right, bro? Vape budget hands. You don't necessarily need it right now. In fact, sometimes it's cool to like save your money. And then, you know, you're looking forward to it. It's something to look forward to. We get, I'm such an instant gratification guy. And that's just kind of the way we are here in 2020. Like right now, we want it right now. I want it from Amazon, same day. No, you let that hype build and you really look forward to it. At least that's what I would do. Uh, let's pick up with Real Jim Shady when we get back to the Super Chat segment. Because what I would like to do literally right now... Okay, I'm just kidding. Let's do uh let's do mail. Mail, mail call. Aha. Boo -doo -doo -doo. Pew. Yeah, matching carpet. Okay, so here's something that's not gonna matter to anybody, but it's important to me. Brian Robinson. Hey Grim Green. Have you tried Prohibition Juice Co? Great clean juices. I'm vaping Speakeasy right now. That was supposed to be the root beer float, but it tastes more like root beer barrel candy. You're absolutely correct, Brian. In fact, not too long ago, this was probably like maybe two months ago, I was on a huge Prohibition Juice Co, the Speakeasy. I was vaping it all over the place, all over the place. Love some Speakeasy. I've got a whole mess of Speakeasy. I'm a big root beer fan, huge root beer fan. Okay. So this is something that nobody's gonna care about, but damn it, it matters to me. These garbage bags are scented. And if you remember years ago, I had this thing with vanilla scented garbage bags, and then I got the Febreze scented garbage bags. And this whole time I thought that these were Febreze scented garbage bags, but they're lavender vanilla. I finally looked at the box today and I've been wrong for like 50 vlogs. These aren't Febreze, they're lavender vanilla. Unacceptable, <laughs> Unaccept <laughs> unacceptable. These are lavender vanilla, damn it. Okay, we gotta get to some vape mail. What are we doing? Oh, not bad, you know, not bad. Can't run long tonight. We have a getting to know Grim Green and we do have to do Kent's God Coil. And I had a liquid tasting too that I really, really wanted to do. All right, we're gonna try to get to all of this, but first, here, uh, this is the first one I need to open. 
This is the first one I need to open. Kent, this is the Kent God Coil. This is the Kent God Coil. And I wish I would have saved the damn picture, damn it. Oh. Oh, I did save it. Uh, put back. Yeah, okay. Now, here we go. Wait, I'm gonna do some fancy footwork. I'm gonna do some fancy footwork real quick. Uh, nope, we're gonna go here. Hang on, hold, hang, hold with me here. There we go. This is what I'm after. Boom. Okay, that's way too big, right? So this is the God coil. This is the Kent's God coil. He, he sent it to me. Oh, I got a picture of it. Yeah, I got a picture of it. This is the first one I wanted to open, and this is what we're going to do directly following the vape mail is, is vape, Kent's, uh, vape Kent's God coil here. Let's say uh, three core alien. Each core is four 32 gauge Nichrome 80s polished down to be 22 gauge in size. Don't worry, we're gonna go back over all of this before we vape it. Uh, it's an alien with 36 gauge Nichrome 80 over it. Ultrasonic cleaned uh, many times throughout the rebuild process. He polishes it and then ultrasonic cleans it. He sent me a little video. This is it. This is the God coil. And he sent it to me pre-installed, two coils, two of them, pre-installed on a TM24 Pro Series deck. I have a TM24 Pro Series deck with aliens in it, wicked up sitting right here with an eclipse cap. So we're gonna compare these two things. Now, from the outside, nothing special. From the outside, literally, what's going on here? From the outside, it literally just looks like an alien. It's not until you really get into the center of it, that creamy middle part, that you see what's really going on behind the scenes here. And Kent hyped this up so much to me, so much to me that I cannot wait. Cannot wait, except I have to. So shout out Sifu Mustache. So last week, Sifu Mustache sent me some liquids, some more Peach Among Worlds and uh, that root beer because he sent it to me before, but he sent it to the wrong address and we kind of just assumed I would never get it. But... Sifu, look what just showed up. Yes, it's the peach among worlds that we thought was gone and missing. It's here. I have like 200 mils of peach among worlds now. Thank you. Sifu, it arrived. It arrived. And this bottle is actually like super nicely steeped. Super nicely steeped. So we're, that's, what, that's what I've been vaping in my type 2 RTA. But it's here. It got here, dude. It got here. Uh, there's a package from Dwayne in here as well. Open on the vlog from Jared. What did you do, Jared? This is from Jared. Aqu Aquios Vapor? I need to write your name on this. I'm writing your name directly on the thing, Jared. Otherwise, I am definitely 100%ly going to forget. So much forgetfulness going on over here. But what's in here? What's in here? <gasps> what is this? What are you doing? P.S. It's polished, washed, sanitized. Hang on. This is something fishy going on here. Yo, yo, Nick, uh, thanks for all you do. Really, your content helps me, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, Patreon, or the podcast. It's all, oh, thank you so much. I've been watching your stuff for six fucking years. We vaped a lot in that time. Caught your IG live stream a few days ago, and you were vaping your Kennedy tube, and you said you wanted a coated one. Well, I love this mod, but the standard 25 millimeter was too lightweight for me. I plan on ordering a 28 millimeter soon, and I won't be using this one at all. I figured you'd get more use out of it than me. This mod is... It's a mod and Addy, not the Ruby. <laughs> yeah, there was a there was a <laughs> there was an incident um, a few years ago uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, I my wife and I, Casey, went to Las Vegas on a vacation with uh, Ruby Rue and her husband Josh. And 
always a good time. Ruby Roo, how much do we miss Las Vegas? I miss Las Vegas so bad. And I brought my Kennedy with me with an RDA on top and I thought it was the Ruby. I'm like, no, this is the Ruby. I'm vaping a Ruby. This is definitely the Ruby. And then Ruby Roo's like, uh, I don't think that's a Ruby. And I was like, what are you talking about? And I just screwed off the atomizer and I was like, oh, I guess it's a roundhouse with the Kennedy RDA on top. Cool. <laughs> I vaped this thinking it was a Ruby for months before I learned that. Well, here's the thing. Jared, don't buy a 28 millimeter yet. I will straight up trade you my 28 millimeter Kennedy for your black Cerakoted 25 millimeter, okay? Jared, don't buy a 28 millimeter yet. We can trade, we can trade, we can trade. Um, it doesn't smell like pennies, yes. The mod is copper, but it doesn't smell like pennies. There's DHE blood money jinx tip on there. I know you said you like the chop tops with Kennedy's, but this tip is so fucking comfortable, just try it. I think there's an AJ Holland aliens in there and you should do, all you have to do is wick it up, drip it and vape it, dude. Thanks again for everything. I appreciate all the years of work you've put and look forward to many more years of you inviting us into your office and telling us like it is. Jared, suburban dirt farmer, bro, let's trade. Thank you. I mean, holy crap, dude. I've never had a, a black Cerakoted Kennedy. I've never had a black Cerakoted Kennedy anything, and that is sick. And that's the uh, the Jinx DHD tip on there. Dude, I don't even know what to say. Like, let's trade. I don't feel okay with this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you this back with your name on it with a Kennedy 28 with some MTurk aliens in it or something, okay? That's what I'm gonna do. That is way too kind of you, and thank you, and holy crap, let's trade mods. I'll trade you, because I have a 28 sitting here that I don't really use, but this, this I will use, but a Kennedy 28 might, might not use. That is a comfortable drip tip, man. Holy crap, I wanna see what coils are in here. Yeah, those look like they could be AJ Holland coils. Oh, you throw those way high. Oh, I'll try it the way you vape it. I usually push my coils down farther than that, and yours seem to be hovering up in midair. I'll give it a shot. Does that help? Does that help flavor, airflow? Suburban Dirt Farmer, please hit me up uh, ASAP wherever. Patreon, pick a place. But make it sure it's one place. <laughs> Patreon or whatever. And we'll trade. I just want to vape a little bit. Fuck, that was cool, man. That was really cool of you, Suburban Dirt Farmer. Thank you, Jared. That is really cool of you. This is from... No Idea. And you are... What? Where? What is this? Where did this come from? Does this come from Signature Tips? Yeah, this came from the United Kingdom. This came from Signature Tips. Holy shit! What is this? The Mono SQ? Is anybody hip to this? Evolved DNA 75C. I'm assuming this is gonna be like a 21700 DNA 75C. Let's open it and give you guys first look. Anything cool? No, nope, not yet. Although that's kind of cool. Oh shit, I'm not gonna be able to do this. All this stuff is gonna fall out of here. Pow! Holy shit. It's uh it's clutchy. It's a little bit bigger than the clutchy, right? It's a little wider than the clutch. Where's my damn clutch? Where I was literally just vaping it. Here it is. So a little bit taller, I guess, than the clutch. A little bit wider than the clutch. But when you flip it around, it's got a fucking screen on the back. DNA 75C. 21700? Tell me it's a 21700 or a 2700. Let's see. Let's go. Let's test. 2700 is going to fit in here? What goes up? Positive up? Nope. Got to be 18s. Single 18 650? Single 18 650. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Might have had it in upside down. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, buddy. Holy shit. 
Wow. Uh, awesome. I'm really excited to try this out. Single 18650, DNA 75C, signature tips. This is the SQ, the mono SQ. That is truly and honestly kind of dope. And if you like the form factor of the clutch, you're going to love the crap out of this. Ooh, it's got a weird button, you guys. Signature tips, that's a weird... It's got a click to it. It's just very firm. It's a really hard, not hard, tactile switch. It's a really firm press on that tactile switch. Dude, awesome. Holy crap. I want to vape this. I want to vape this like right now. What can I put on here? Let's try my RTA on for size. Let's see if it'll fire it. Uh huh. Yeah, there we go. Uh, except we're not doing nickel. We're going to do wattage. Yeah, 20 watts. No, we're going to need some more wattage than that. Let's see what we can get out of this uh, Sony VTC5 18650. I think I was vaping this at like 45 watts. Let's try 41. Uh, yes. Let's see. Rockin'. God, that's a comfortable mod. That is just real comfy. It's a thumb button. It's not really conducive to fingering. I'm a finger guy, but it is a thumb button. Good on you, SQ. That's rad. I Thank you for sending this my way. You know, there's so much cool shit that comes out and like, I don't, I don't, I don't go to China. I don't ask. I've never asked for anything <laughs> ever. And because of that, sometimes I don't get cool stuff and it feels kind of cool like to get a cool signature tips mod. Like, thank you. I'm looking forward to using this. I'll certainly do a review for it. Awesome. That DNA board, damn it, it's just such a good board. I just like the way it feels. And that's, it's not something you can explain. Ruby Roo gets it. I know Ruby Roo gets it. It just, you, it's something you can't explain. It just feels nice. It just feels like a nice, smooth, power, consistent. There's no kind of PWM helicopter rattlesnakes going on in there. Dude, this is it. This is my new setup right now. Awesome. Well, that was a really nice surprise. Dang, what a good mail day. What a good ass mail day. All right, we'll do Dwayne's package last because Lee, where are you at? Not the real Gerard Butler. This is your tube. And I am gonna open this tube. Open the tube like Dwayne opens tubes. Oh yeah. It's just, uh, mm. all right. I show this I don't want it to uh, I don't want to fuck it up it looks like it's wrapped in paper and I don't want to fuck it up how am I gonna do this I'm scared I'm scared not the real Gerard Butler I'm scared huh okay it's just like a big roll of toilet paper that's it it's like a big roll of toilet paper just got to get in there delicately. All right. Oh, holy crap. What the crap? That's fucking awesome. Stateofshockstudios.com. It's, it's like silver foil. Look at this. That's amazing. Holy crap. That's R2-D2 in the back of uh, what I'm assuming is an X-Wing with X-Wings in the background. We got Han. We got, who's that, Wedge right there? We got Wedge. Han, Luke, and Wedge. Wedge Antilles. Holy crap, not the real Gerard Butler. Look at that. Look at that rainbow freaking foil finish on there. 
I love this. I love this. Not the real Gerard Butler. You're the real Gerard Butler to me. <laughs> Thank you. This is the coolest shit ever. See, this is gonna be one of those things like, dude, I need to get this framed. I need to redo this gallery wall. Dang. Thank you, uh, thank you. I'm gonna wrap this up in the paper again. And we're gonna tube it. I don't want this getting fucked up. Awesome. Oh God, I, I rolled this poorly. There we go, there we go. Damn it, Lee. Very cool. This has been like the best vape mail. This has been like the best mail segment of any vlog ever. Brand new Cerakoted Kennedy. What? Amazing Star Wars. God Coil. The God Coil. New signature tips mod. What the hell? Sticky Monkey. This is because of the Sticky Monkey, isn't it? The Sticky Monkey did this. Thank you, Sticky Monkey. Cheers. Holy crap, that's awesome. All right, Yak, what do we got from you, Yak? I'm pretty sure this is that mango juice of his. And let me tell you guys firsthand. Let me tell you guys firsthand. First of all, I love Dwayne. I love Dwayne like, like he's my brother. I love Dwayne. He has been busting his ass on this liquid, on this mango liquid. You guys have no idea, no idea how much time and dedication and mixing and fine tuning and dialing in and really getting this mango to be like just the sick as tits mango. Since Rip Trippers is doing other weird videos, I'm taking sick as tits. I'm claiming that. <laughs> I'm stealing it. He has, I mean, he has gone crazy for this mango. Oh boy, mango. Fuck yeah, oh boy, mango. You should be proud of this, Dwayne. He has put, I mean, his blood, sweat, and tears into this liquid. And even just the conversations, he's, he's constantly like, w when this was getting developed, he would always say, it's not ready, it's not ready, it's not ready yet, I think I'm gonna do this, I think I'm gonna do this. And he would always tell me, he'd always come to me and be like, bro, I just want this juice to be really, really fucking good. Like, really, really fucking good. And I'm like, keep going, dude, keep going. Mango. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank you, Omboy OC. I got some mango now. Should we do the mango for the random liquid tasting? I haven't had the final version of the mango. And, oh, that's right. You told me about this. So this is a brand new Lost Vape mod. We had the Lost Vape. Lost Vape kind of... Lost Vape little, went a little bit off the rails, in my opinion. They had some cool stuff, and then they had some weird stuff, and then they did the like the Orion, and then the Orion Q, and then they did that sub-brand, and then it's like the Q Ultra, and there's all these like different pod systems that all kind of look the same and all kind of do the same thing. And I remember looking at all these pods going, man, remember when Lost Vape, like in 2016, was releasing those like really dope mods with like carbon fiber and wood panels and leather and it was just lost vape it was kind of like this a little bit of like a it was just a fountain of, of saliva that came out of my mouth right there that was like a geyser of saliva that was crazy they used to make like i what i would consider like bougie bougie-ish mods well this right here is from lost vape this is the centaurus DNA 75C, 250C, sorry. DNA 250C feels like an old school, like dope, bougie Lost Vape mod. Carbon fiber, squishy leather right here. It's that C-frame kind of look to it that used to be all, you know, everybody loved that in Hemo stuff. 510, there's your controls. Squishy, squishy button right there. They got that brushed, like brushed aluminum. Feels pretty lightweight. How does this open? Oh, there's a door. Yeah, door, dual 18650s. Interesting. All right, shit. Dude, signature tips and Lost Vape. This is the Centaurus. One more time, if anybody wants some Lost Vape Centaurus porn. 
Lost Vape. Kind of cool, kind of bougie. I don't know exactly how I feel about carbon fiber. I can't decide if I'm a fan of carbon fiber or not. I go back and forth every single time with carbon fiber. Even when I was thinking about my billet box recently, I was like, dude, maybe some carbon fiber doors on this would be kind of slick. You know, like some some bigger carbon fiber doors? And then I kind of go, yeah, maybe not. I don't know. How do I feel about carbon fiber? This carbon fiber feels like legitimate, authentic carbon fiber, not like the fake carbon fiber like stickers that you see on sometimes on mods or sometimes on accessories and things like that. This feels like legit, legit textured carbon fiber. Kind of bougie, right? C-frames coming back, sick boy. C-frames coming back. For anybody that's not familiar, if you haven't been around in the vape world too long, um, C-frame refers to this style. See how it looks like a C? And then on this side, it's just kind of the mod, but the frame of it is a C. For a very, very long time in vaping, let's call it 2015, C-frames were like everybody in the Hemo world was just like double jacking off to C-frame mods all over the place. And there would be C-frames with stab wood, usually stab wood on a C-frame, and they were all like, you know, $900, and you couldn't buy them, and you had to get on a waiting list to get a raffle ticket to get an invite to the secret Facebook group where you had to buy another raffle ticket and wait in line and see if you got your number called. And then if you got your number called, then you had the opportunity to maybe buy one of these mods. It was dumb. And I always made fun of them. And uh, I made fun of them mostly because I was jealous. I'm comfortable admitting that now. I'm comfortable admitting that now. Payment... (laughs) Shut up, dude. You don't have... I, Dwayne. I'm okay admitting that I was just jealous of all the C-frame stab wood mods. In fact, if there's any like... I hate to use the term old school for 2015, but if anybody has like some old school, like, uh, you know, uh, what were those ones that just went out of my head? Top hat. Top, top hat. Top hat. Top hat. I, I keep saying top hat. Top hat, uh, something with an M, don't know. C-frames with stab wood. If anybody has one from like 2015, I'll I'll definitely pick one up. Yeah, this is, (laughs) that's the reason why I still hate Hemo. No, I don't hate Hemo. I just don't get it, I guess. I, I don't get it. Hemo stuff is different from high quality stuff because you can have a high quality device or high quality product, but it doesn't necessarily fall into that like true Hemo category. Like Hemo means that you can adjust and fiddle and tweak and do everything. And it's like titanium screws and little washers and little inserts and things. And that's how I feel about Hemo. I feel like Really, really high quality, but fiddly beyond repair. You know, that's how I feel about Hemo. That, and it's hard to get, and I hated, I hated back in the day, like, the Hemo arrogance. One of my, one of my least favorite things in the world is uh, vape shaming. That's something that has always upset me when uh, Hemo people would, uh, you know, ah, what's that, China mod? I vape this. It cost me $8,000 and took me two years to get. Does it vape at 50 watts? Yes. So does mine. (laughs) So does mine. But I digress. I don't want to rag on Hemo because it's whatever. Hemo's not, I don't know if Hemo's like a really huge thing anymore still in vaping. I have a stratum, I guess, that's considered pretty Hemo. I've got some other stuff, I guess, that's considered pretty Hemo. Don't really care. Vape whatever you want. Vape what you like. That's what I would say. Vape what you like. So that represents the end of literally the best vape mail segment that's ever happened. We have a half hour left. We have a hard stop. We have a hard stop at like like 6.55. I am calling this in a hard stop. So what I'm going to do right now is we're going to do some super chats. And then I wish I had put a bumper together. It's going to be time to vape the God coil. Let's do some uh, super chats. No time for the whole bumper. No time. All right. We are picking up with uh, Real Jim Shady here. Real Jim Shady. 
heard anything about you don't know nicotine? Um, no. In fact, you know, thinking about life outside of quarantine, I was supposed to be flying to Germany yesterday for the Hall of Vape Expo in Stuttgart. And then I was supposed to come home and go to the You Don't Know Nicotine premiere in Milwaukee. And that is, is not happening. I don't know. I don't know. Aaron really wants to do a premiere. He wants to do a premiere to make it a big deal, to show off the movie, to thank everybody, all the cast and crew that worked tirelessly on this movie. I haven't seen, other than the first trailer that came out, I've seen nothing else from it. I don't know. I don't know. I'll try to get some information on it. Now, I'll try to reach out to Aaron and see what's going on. Jay Hayes is going to get me. That's okay. I'm not scared of Jay Hayes. I ain't scared of no Jay Hayes. I like Jay Hayes. I'm not trying to talk shit on Jay Hayes. He can be Hemo or Hema. He can be whatever he wants. He can vape whatever he wants. If he likes weird fiddly little inserts and like $50 titanium screws, then go nuts. Kind of vapes the same as this uh, $30 d- uh, drag thing. Yep. Vapes pretty good. So, no, I haven't heard anything about You Don't Know Nicotine other than I'm really excited for this. I'm really excited for this movie. If they do a premiere, I'm going to be there. If they do a stream, I'm going to be there. If they do anything, I'm going to be there. I'm going to support and pimp the ever-loving crap out of this movie. Because I know Aaron, and I know, you know, I, I, all I know, all the only context of this movie that I have right now is what I shot with Aaron. That's it. I know what I said. I don't know what anybody else said. I don't know what Stanton Glantz said. I don't know what Pave said. I don't know what anybody else said in regards to nicotine. All I know is what I said about nicotine. That's my. That's what I'm going off of. That's why I'm really excited about this. Um, Southern Comfort. Exactly what the fuck makes Jerome Adams so sure of this? Big tobacco money in his pocket. Is he a smoker? Could he not quit with vaping? Here's the thing. Here's how I feel about Jerome Adams. I feel like Jerome Adams is just a nice dude. I don't, I have nothing against Jerome Adams other than the things that he says, right? Other than the things that he says, you separate the policy from the person, right? Same thing I said on Twitter about Mark Hamill. I fundamentally disagree with everything Mark Hamill says about politics or tweets about politics, but I love Star Wars and I love Mark Hamill. See how easy that is? Separate the policy from the person. That's what I do. You have to. You just have to sometimes. (laughs) And so the way that I feel about Jerome Adams is I feel like he's a really nice guy and I feel like he genuinely wants what is best. Like a lot of people and a lot of politicians, I feel like he genuinely wants what is best. I just don't think he's very well informed on things. And I think, you know, it was pretty clear in that Good Morning America when he was kind of like stumbling through his words with his weird like cotton mouth and he's trying to blame vaping for COVID. You remember, everybody remember this? When he said, one thing that we do know, he was agreeing with Gretchen Whitmer in Michigan who said, maybe there's too little science on it, but we also know we have a higher concentration of vapors in the United States. Jerome Adams said the same thing. I think they just tell him what to say and he goes out there and says it and then goes backstage and goes, did I do okay? Is that, did I do okay? Okay, I did, okay, thank you. Did I say everything I was supposed to say? Okay, that's how I think of Jerome Adams. Other than whenever he tweets about anything other than personal stuff, I just think someone told him to say that. Someone told him to say that because there's no way I can't rationalize the doctor of America not understanding the concept of harm reduction and not understanding the concept of clean nicotine divorced from carcinogenic tobacco. That doesn't feel like a hard thing to grasp at all, but he still struggles with it and it makes no sense to me. Uh, Kevin, very gracious of you. Nick, buddy, I got you a brew, so you'll... so. I got you a brew you'll so, so much love already for your swag box. I'm I'm sorry that I'm having a hard time reading this. Let me pull this over here. <laughs> I'm sending you my coils. I'm curious if you'd rather Star Wars or music-ish stuff 
or Scranton-esque swag. <gasps> Scranton, anything from Scranton, Kevin. Anything from Scranton. Seriously. I, I love Star Wars. Don't get me wrong. I love music. I'm going to try to talk about uh, this album. Anything from Scranton. Anything from Scranton. A bag of like Let's chips. I'd be stoked. I'd be stoked. A Froggy 101 sticker. I would, I would, I would stab a child. No, okay, I wouldn't do that. I would shove a child for a Froggy 101 sticker. 800%. British eyes. Just want to give a quick shout out to my wonderful girlfriend, Samantha. She's a nurse working with COVID patients and I love her more than anything. Oh man. God damn it, British eyes. Stop being so fucking sweet all the time. We're shouting out Samantha from, uh, from Ryan, from British eyes. Appreciate you, bro. Desert Vapor, welcome to the billet box rabbit hole. Not hole. <laughs> just still, there's gotta be a better way to say that. Um, Daniel, two trips, choo-choo, hype train. No, I mean, I'm not, uh, I mean, if you're talking about the mango, that's not what I'm trying to do. I just, I see what goes on behind the scenes with Dwayne and he cares about this liquid. I hear, I heard about it constantly. I tried like 18 different revisions of this that truly and honestly, a lot of them kind of tasted the same, but not to Dwayne. They didn't taste the same to Dwayne. He dials in liquids like I've never experienced someone dial in liquids. Good enough is not good enough for Dwayne. He's like, I want this juice to be the most fire thing of all time. I haven't even tried it. I'll try it. It could be terrible. I could, I could regret everything I'm saying right now. Tenacious TX Vapes, man. Got a Velocity. What? Avid Vapor. New. Thanks to British Eyes and enjoying the oh so good retro vape while watching Vlog Day. Hell yeah, dude. Velocity. I have a complicated relationship with the Velocity, but it is a spectacular atomizer. We're going to... Uh, we're gonna finish up here with Top Kills TV. Love your vids. Greetings, Roy, the Netherlands. Shout out to Top Kills TV from the Netherlands there. You know, the Netherlands, I think, is going through a little bit of a thing with vaping right now too. Vaping and nicotine. The Netherlands is kind of cracking down a little bit on nicotine. I've been reading about this and uh, I don't like where the Netherlands is headed uh, with vaping. Uh, just, not, just not a good place to be. So I hope you're doing okay up there in the Netherlands. Vaping Australian. Sending all my love, brother. Hope you're good. Hashtag Vodka Pocket. Hell yeah, Vodka Pocket. Vodka Pocket is the oldest running joke on the Culture of Clouds podcast. <laughs> Hashtag Vodka Pocket. Go back and listen to the very first episode of the Culture of Clouds podcast I did with Ruby Roo in, well, when was that? 2015, 2016? We've been going forever, it feels like. Hashtag Vodka Pocket. Uh, so, okay, let's do Suburban Dirt, dirt Farmer. Totally didn't think it would get there so fast. It's here. It's freaking here and I love it. And like I said, Suburban Dirt Farmer, do not buy a single thing. I'm sending you my Kennedy 28 because you sent me your Kennedy 25, okay? That's the deal and you don't have a choice. You just don't have a choice. All right, we're gonna pick up again here with Christopher when we get back to the Super Chats, but I'm dying to vape this God coil. I am dying to vape this God coil. Um, uh, I don't have any, uh, damn it. Should I roll the Tuesday bro Tuesday bumper or, uh, should I just roll the news again? Or should I roll the liquid again? I don't have a bumper for this, but it's time. Uh, God coil time. Okay. Timestamp right here. Jeremy V one thirty five thirty one. This is the God coil. So I showed you the picture, right? I showed you the picture. This is the picture of the actual coil. This is what's going on on the inside. And you can tell from this picture like how tiny this coil is. Those wraps on the outside, that's 40 what gauge? Like 46 gauge, where did I, where did I, shit. What did I do with it? I don't, I don't remember what I did with the thing, you can't. Where's the picture? Okay, here it is. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 37 gauge, so that is 37 gauge wire on the outside. And when you look at 37 gauge wire, IRL, it is like hair, it's just tiny. That's how macro this in. Look at that, it's twisted and polished and sanded down to be the diameter of 20, or uh, not 20, 20, that's ridiculous. So 
rather than me like stumbling through this, I'm going to set this up right now and I'm gonna let you watch just a little video of Kent kind of explaining what this coil is uh, is all about. So what do you have to say, Kent? Hey Nick, let's just say that we're good friends because I sent you that coil, okay? That thing, each coil took about an hour and a half each. I start with four strands of 32 gauge twisted as tight as they go and then I have to get that down to the size of a 26 gauge. And when it starts, it's about the size of a 20 gauge. And so I have to use sandpaper back and forth. It takes hours, dude, in a drill to get that down to the correct size. And I use calipers to check. And once it gets down to 0.4 millimeters, then I use the higher grits and polish it up. Mirror polish, ultrasonic kit, and the ultrasonic cleaner right after I'm done. And then I wrap the coil, get it dry fired and everything, and ultrasonic clean it again to get all the tiny grits out of there because you don't want to be vaping that. So, yeah, a little history on this coil. If you're going to cut me off right now, that's fine. Cut it out of the vlog for all I care, Nick. You know, I just took all this time to build you these coils, and I hope you like them. That's all. So, <laughs> the first time I made these, I wasn't expecting much. I was like, how much better can aliens get? The first hit on it that I took, I was like, oh, my God. And I kept vaping it to see um, if it if it held up. And it's still it's my favorite coil. The problem is it takes so long to build that I don't build them very often because it's just a lot of work. But, buddy, I hope I hope you like it. And if you don't, that's fine, you know? Either way, I'm just, I hope you like it. This is it. This is the God Coil. And you can't even tell. I mean, it just looks like a little alien, right? It just looks like a little alien. We're also going to give a shout out for the God Coil uh, to Chris Bassard, Clouds and Coils. I guess he was a... Uh, pretty instrumental in, in creating, helping Kent create this. He said, be sure to thank Chris Bassard, Clouds and Coils, absolutely. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna vape some regular aliens, right? I need a baseline sample. So I have TM24 Pro Deck, uh, Eclipse Cap, white Eclipse Cap on top, Pony on Acid. The only reason I'm not using mango is because I need it to be a liquid that I know really well, that I that I can, you know, readily get the flavor from. This is a 0.15. These are just regular aliens, 80 watts, just to get a baseline, you know, just to get a baseline. Hmm. Nice. Flavorful. Good. I mean, it's aliens, man. If you've ever vaped an alien, then you know that aliens are rad. Chances are, I can't tell you whose aliens these are, but chances are, it's uh, these are Turk aliens in here. You know what? It's in a TM24 Pro, so chances are they're Kent regular aliens in here. These aliens are popping and flavorful. This pony on acid tastes deliciously like pony on acid in this TM24 Pro with regular aliens. Now, let's get this deck off of here. We're gonna put the God Coil deck on here. I'm gonna get some pony on acid, three milligram, very well steeped. Pony on acid uh, gets throatier the, the, the longer it steeps. Fresh POA, it's not as throaty as steeped POA. And I'm not saying that's like a negative thing. I actually like the throat throat sort of throatiness from this POA. Kind of like, uh, I don't know, when you get a good throat hit. Old school throat hits. Okay, let's see. Resistance is very close. Those aliens were a 0.15. That, I know. That can't laugh, Aileen. I can't. <laughs> it kills me every time. <laughs> kills me every time. He's fucking hilarious. So this is the God Coil. What? I'm going to leave it at the same wattage. What? All right. So I'm going to leave this at the same wattage. You feel like you're caught in a time loop here? We're going to put the same cap, the same, what does he call these? Eclipse cap. Now, this is the test of the God coil. In fact, here, let's do the, oh, I don't have two eclipse caps. That's the problem. Do I? I don't. Don't I? Hang on. I'd like to take, yes! Nope, never mind. Never mind. I thought I had one. I thought I had 
had a spare. That's fine. I thought I had a spare. Really, I'd like to like go back and forth and back and forth. But this is the God coil, dual coil, 0.13, 85 watts, pony on acid, a liquid I'm very, very familiar with. Kent says this is going to blow me away. This could be, this could be just one big troll. He could have just built these and been like, Nick's going to hate them. <laughs> Nick's just going to hate these. Could be. That's a... Uh... Um, these taste really good. Noticeably different than a regular alien. Noticeably different than, than a regular alien. And I don't think, hang on, I need to do a little bit of like absorbing here. So here, we're gonna, just going to do this real quick. I'm going to vape these back and forth. It's kind of like the random liquid tasting. I'm just going to do this real quick. The audio is going to be gone. Stay hydrated, hydro homies. Now, <coughs> wow. Okay. Here's what I've noticed from the God coil versus regular aliens. The regular aliens are, are freaking delicious. Pony on acid tastes beautiful. Just like creamy, strawberry glaze, a little bit of pineapple in there. It's just a refreshingly, wonderfully beautiful liquid. I love this liquid. It tastes exactly as it should on these regular aliens. There's something about this God coil that it doesn't change the flavor of the liquid. I can't quite tell what's going on. I feel like this God coil really brings out like the high notes in this liquid. I'm getting a lot more like real crispy strawberry. I get a little bit more of that like real crispy pineapple top note that I never really got when I wasn't vaping it on the God coil. It tastes better. I mean, it tastes different. It's bringing out different things. And I can't explain this. There's literally, yeah, I know, smoke alarm, right, Disco? Uh, No, there's literally... I can't think of any science behind this. Kent can explain it. He was telling me about how he, when he's ultrasonic cleaning it or firing it, and he can see the liquid like going down the cores of the of the of the alien itself. It it's bringing out top notes like sparkling top notes that I haven't tasted in Pony on Acid. It's unbelievable. It's kind of unbelievable. 
I've just been going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And pony on acid. <laughs> Kent, God damn it. Now, I know that these coils are a nightmare to build. Days of building for these coils. I am truly honored and stoked that Kent said yes when I asked him to send me these preloaded in a TM24 so that I could vape them on the vlog. I was completely honored because I know this took him days to do. Days to do. Let's have a, one more back and forth and then we're going to wrap this up. Yep, that's pony on acid, bro. Tastes good. And that's pony on acid and it just tastes better. It just tastes better. You're going to have to take my word for this. Here's the thing. I wish that I could send this RDA like to around to everybody so that everybody could do this. Everybody could do this. Tastes dense, tastes more saturated. I get more of these strawberry top notes in it. It actually like kind of cuts off a little bit of the throatiness of it. I kind of can't believe that this is real. I kind of can't believe that this is real. Kent, whenever I've talked about, I wish I had a good Kent vape, this is the best Kent vape I've ever had. This is insane. And he's not selling these. He's not, uh, you know, I nothing. He's not selling them. This isn't pimping anything out. It's just, if you have the ability, British eyes, British eyes, challenge on the floor, build these, <laughs> build these and taste these. Holy crap. The God coil. I can't explain it. I, I cannot explain this, but it is real. And it is the God coil. I'm going to frame this. I'm going to frame this and put it on my desk and be like, look at you little God coil. Aren't you just the greatest little thing? The hype is real. The God coil prevails. The God coil has triumphed its enemies. The God coil has heard the lamentations of their women and seen their enemies driven before them. Dang, God coil. Dang, Kent. Skills. Kent is the builder. Builder guy. He started it. He's ending it. <laughs> He's ending it with the God coil. That's crazy. We have exactly like 15 minutes left before that's what she said starts. So I am going to do a really, 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 really quick getting to know Grim Green and then we're going to take this out with some super chats. How's that sound? Good? Good. Not even going to play the whole bumper. Not even going to play the whole bumper because I want to talk about this album because it was just weird and cosmic that someone was talking about this on the Discord and I was like, how did you know what album I'm going to do this week? How did you know that? How did you know what album I was going to do this week? So we're doing this album today. I grew up obviously like steeped in a lot of stuff. I, I listened to Metallica, you know, like Metallica Master of Puppets. I loved the crap out of it. A lot of Def Leppard, a lot of that like, you know, 80s thrash metal, a lot of Anthrax, a lot of Slayer, a lot of Metallica, and a lot of Megadeth. The album that we're talking about tonight really quickly Megadeth, Rust in Peace. Um, this isn't necessarily what I would consider to be Megadeth's best album. In fact, it's it's objectively probably their best album, but it's not my actual favorite, favorite Megadeth album. I was not a huge fan of Megadeth when they first came out. I'm just going to admit it. Didn't care about Megadeth. Didn't care. Heard the first record. I was kind of like, this is dumb and I don't like it. And I don't like Megadeth and I don't like Dave Mustaine and I don't like his weird vocals. Dave Mustaine's vocals, <laughs> Dave Mustaine's vocals, it feels like he was forced to be a vocalist and he doesn't want to sing for Megadeth. That's the way his vocals sound to me. It sounds like he, they wrote a bunch of songs and it came time to do vocals and he just got in the booth and he's like, what do I, what do, I do? I don't know what to do. All right. Uh, Megadeth. Yeah. And he just tries and he doesn't hit any notes ever. He just sounds like you're stepping on like a cat's tail all the time. 
It's just the way his vocals are. And I didn't like them, but they grew on me and they grew on me. And I was, I wasn't like anti Megadeth, but I just didn't get into Megadeth because I knew the Dave Mustaine Metallica thing. And I'm like, I'm a Metallica fan and I like Metallica and Megadeth. And there was an album that came out shortly before this called Peace Sells But Who's Buying, which is honestly one of their one of their real bangers of an album. But I was like, I was in like eighth grade at the time and all my friends were like, don't listen to Megadeth. They are satanic, okay? Go listen to that song, Devil's Island, and Dave Mustaine is like conjuring demons, and it's danger. like, don't listen to it. It's satanic. It will put satanic things in your head. And I was like, I was scared of Megadeth. I was like, well, I don't want to listen. I don't want to be satanic. I don't want to listen to satanic things. I was like legitimately scared, not scared, but like, I don't want to listen to Megadeth. Plus I don't really like them. So that's another nail in the coffin, right? And then fucking Rust in Peace comes out and I'm like, Megadeth is amazing. This this album is incredible. As far as like early 90s, actually 1990, as far as 1990 thrash metal goes, Megadeth Rust in Peace. You're not going to find a better thrash metal album from 1990 than Megadeth's Rust in Peace. All the songs are about two minutes too long. And it's perfect. Because Dave Mustaine, at this time, I don't know what he was doing. He's just like, should we do this riff five times or 18 times? Okay, 20 times, sure. So it's like you get 30 of a riff before the before the first verse and then you get 30 more of the riff before the chorus and then you get the chorus like 17 times. It's just a riffy, riffy album. And all the songs, like I said, they feel about two minutes too long, but they don't also as well. I, I love this album. I really, really love this album. My favorite Megadeth album is the one that came after this, Countdown to Extinction. I think that's the superior Megadeth album, but this is like the legendary Megadeth album. This was the album that kind of cemented them into the mainstream, like cemented them into that big four category, that like Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer, Anthrax, that big four group. This is the album that brought brought Megadeth there. Unfortunately, Dave Mustaine was, you know, drinking a lot, doing a lot of drugs and things like that. So before we get to the last of those super chats, and I apologize, the two songs, two songs going on the playlist, the two bangers from this album, coincidentally, are the first and last tracks of the album. Now, I was contemplating putting three Rust in Peace songs on the playlist, said no. We have to keep it at two. A man's got to have a code. So the first song that we're putting on there is the first track off this album, Holy War is Punishment Due. It's the Megadeth banger. This is the banger of all Megadeth bangers. Holy Wars. Listen to it. Love it. See, Sean, I was considering Five Magics, but Five Magics, I think, is like the worst song on this album. And it's because of my own hangups. It's because... I hear him say thigh master <laughs> instead of I've mastered the chorus. He says, I've mastered the five magics. But to me, the way Dave Mustaine sings, he sounds like he says thigh master. <laughs> and I can't not hear thigh master when I listen to that song. So that's why I'm not including it. Holy Wars punishment due. And then the last track rust in peace, Polaris, the chorus of Polaris, Rust in Peace Polaris is awesome. Awesome. So there you go. Real quick, getting to know Grim Green. Huge Megadeth fan, not so much anymore. Megadeth was a band I had a brief love affair with. I discovered this album, Countdown to Extinction. Those are the two that I truly, truly love. I went back and listened to like all their old stuff right after that. And I was like, yeah, Peace Sales is good. Killing is my business kind of sucks. So far, so good, so well, kind of sucks. You know, they're not great. They're not great in my opinion. It sounds like thrash metal from 1985. It doesn't, it pales in comparison to some of the metal and thrash metal that's out now. But this was like the start. You know, this was the roots of thrash metal. So I'm going to be adding those to the Getting to Know Grim Green playlist on Spotify, which I'll have linked down below. Only bangers. Only bangers. I listened to this playlist the other day when I was riding my bike. It's only bangers. 
I love it. So that's going to bring us to the end of the vlog here. So here's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to say thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you. This has been an amazing vlog. I've been looking forward to this vlog like I look forward to every vlog. And this one has been really, truly fun and completely awesome. That's what she said is starting in literally five minutes over on the Ruby Roo YouTube channel. Literally five minutes, as well as the vape team, literally in five minutes. So what I'm gonna do for the rest of this vlog, I'm just gonna finish the rest of these super chats and that's it. We're gonna finish the super chats and say goodbye. So don't feel obligated. I don't wanna keep anybody, but if you're more than welcome to hang out just for, a, just for a few more minutes while we get through some of these super chats. Is that cool with everybody? Is that cool? Here's a little bit of a super chat bumper. Not even the whole thing. Not even the whole thing. Uh, we were picking up here with, uh, I don't remember where we were. Christopher, that's right, Christopher. Very gracious of you, man. Sup, bro? They opened some Caramel Corpse and a Kennedy Vindicator. So sad, all the number juice is no more. P.S. Got Yig also. Yeah, it's a sore subject for me. Christopher, and thank you for bringing it up again, just reopening that wound. I'm just kidding. Uh, I do have some Yig. I've got about 15 bottles of Yig that I'm saving on to just because. Greasy sauce, tactile switch, right? Mmm, tactile switch. Matt Sinister, better frame that rad poster before R2D2, hashtag powerbomb. Like, all right. Look, I, okay, I understand the hierarchy. I will get the rad poster framed before R2-D2. <laughs> Appreciate that, Matt Sinister. See, oh boy, OC, you're not helping me. Payment for the mango ad. That's not what that was. <laughs> it's not a payment for the mango ad. Take your money back. I don't need your own boy money. I don't need your muscle money. New Wave Dave, uh, love C-frames. Still use my Paul Merrick daily. I love C-frames too. And the reason that I talk so much shit on them is because I was jealous because I could never get one. Okay. Okay. I'm willing to admit that now. Paulish. It's Paul, but it's like Paul-ish. Uh, do you miss Scribbles in Ireland? We miss you. Yeah. Fuck yeah, Paulish. Is that you, Scribbles? Paulish, are you Scribbles? Scribbles. Fucking Scribbles. Yeah, I miss you, man. I was thinking about you the other day. That's funny. I'm glad you hit me up. I do miss you guys, and I miss Ireland. I've only been to Ireland once, and I, I miss it. I miss Ireland. Daniel, two trips, 86. Therion, paranormal, triad, centaurus. You're welcome. Yes. Therion, paranormal, triad, centaurus. Yes. Those were the lost vapes. I loved the paranormal. I liked the Therion. It was kind of bougie, though, wasn't it? I felt like it was kind of bougie. Joseph, very gracious of you. Love you, Nick. I've been rewatching the guest vlogs and miss seeing guests for you to riff stuff. Will there be a guest going forward? Thanks for all you do for us. Yeah, Joseph, um, my original plan was to just bite the bullet, spend the money and fly people out here. Flew Beecher out here, flew Eric out here because I wanted guests on the vlog. Now with quarantine, that's not a possibility. So yes, guests coming soon. I think I'm going to have my wife on as a guest in an upcoming vlog, and we are definitely going to be doing video guests on the vlog in addition to trying to create the stream with Bogan. So got a full plate, but I'm trying to make it happen because I miss it too. It's hard to do this for two hours by yourself. You know, it's just go, go Nick, go do the thing. Fun, be funny and do stuff and drink beer and vape things and pimp out own boy's juice because he paid you $100. I'm just kidding. That's not how that happened. But yes, guests, guests for sure. I miss having guests. I mostly just really miss my friends and I want to talk to them. So that's what that's going to be. Um, I'm also, here's a little fun fact. I'm also, um, I do a podcast by myself called the Full Grim Podcast. And I've only done one episode so far as like a test run, but what I plan on doing is getting some people on that podcast. And I think my first guest on the Full Grim podcast is going to be Mike Vapes. Mike Vapes, Recurve, RDA. Just the RDA, not Mike. Mike Vapes. I think he's going to be my first guest. We're trying to work something out. We're trying to find a date that works for both of us to get on the podcast. But I think it's going to happen. So something else to look forward there too, you know. Um, Southern Comfort, so he's a bobblehead. Somebody 
somebody's baby back bitch. What a punk. So that's from a movie that I don't know what it's from. Isn't it Southern Comfort? Is that from Pootie Tang? I told you, I've never seen Pootie Tang. Is it from Pootie Tang? It might be from Pootie Tang. Clouds Bro Reviews. Uh, Nick, I'm from Milwaukee. I'll be at the premiere when it's rescheduled. Maybe a little yo-yo meetup, dude. I Absolutely, I'll hit you up on Discord. If it happens in Milwaukee, if Aaron can pull it out and we can do a premiere in Milwaukee, I will be there 100% and we'll have a yo-yo meetup. That sounds good. Eifer, I'm no longer an atheist. All hail the God coil. Yes, all hail the God coil. It, it tastes so good. It tastes so good. It tastes so good. Lusimo, 100% agree on Megadeth, even Thymaster, right? It sounds like that's what he says. I'm not crazy. <laughs> I can't believe that. I've never heard anybody else mention Thymaster. Thymaster. He just does it. I can't explain it. It's just the way Dave talks. And when you sing like Dave Mustaine, I'm sorry, it's seven o'clock right now. I'm going to wrap this up really very shortly. When you sing like Dave Mustaine, you have to clench your teeth together and you have to make like this face. And it just brings your voice to the right tone. And you're like, ah, Dave Mustaine, Thigh Master. Thigh Master. <laughs> Stay hydrated, Hydro homies. Eifer, Zoom guests. Shit, I don't see why not. I'll bring everybody on. We'll just have a full panel. I'll have. I'll do a special vlog with just every yo, every patron. Four hundred guests, all in one little square. <laughs> you think we could do that? You think that wouldn't be chaos? Could be fun. Southern Comfort. No, Jerome Adams. I'll have Jerome Adams on. Look, if I could get an interview with Jerome Adams, what he would never do an interview with me. Never. He would never do an interview with me ever in a hundred years. I would like it, but never in a hundred years would he do it. All right, that's it. We have done the super chats. We have done the damn thing. It is 7.02 and I am running over and Ruby Roo is going to drop kick me like a bag of dirt if I don't cut this off right now. Apaka, I love you. Thank you for being here. Jeremy V, happy birthday to you. Appreciate you. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming out. I love Vlog Day, and I love that we get to kind of share Vlog Day together. I'm gonna sit here. I'm gonna clean up. I'm gonna I'm gonna vape this God coil, and it's just uh, that's just what it is. Actually, I'm gonna sit here finishing this beer because I'm not gonna chug this. There's not a chance I'm gonna chug Sticky Monkey. I have to enjoy the rest of this. I have to. So, with that said, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. No matter what anybody tells you. No matter what anybody tells you, vaping is 95% less harmful for you than burning combustible tobacco cigarettes. So yeah, absolutely, you guys. Let's keep on vaping. Let's keep on vaping. Hang on, let me get the bumper. Hang on, let's keep vaping. Peace out. Be excellent to each other, guys. <laughs> <laughs>